Great. So, uh, good morning, everybody. I'm uh, Floriana Petrone, assistant professor at the University of Nevada, uh, Reno. And today I will give you uh, just an update about the research we have been conducting within the project uh, probabilistic simulation based evaluation of the uh, effect of near field spatially varying ground motions on distributed infrastructure systems. So, the team working on this project, uh, besides myself, includes Dr. Abrahamson from UC Berkeley and Dr. McCallan from uh, University of Nevada, Reno, and uh, Lawrence Burke National Lab. And Arsantas Limi, PhD student at University of Nevada, uh, Reno. Uh, before we start, I want to acknowledge the collaboration with the uh, DOE Exascale Computing Project that has provided the uh, ground motion simulations utilized in this uh, study. And uh, in regard to this, I also want to thank uh, Dr. Rogers and Dr. Pitarka for not only providing the simulation data, but also for the usable discussions we had in the early stages of this project about the just interpretation of the first uh, just simulation results. Now, um, as a brief uh, just reminder uh, about the uh, background and objective of, of this project. So really here, the core idea is to uh, develop an ability to uh, utilize advanced simulations to fully characterize the specific near field motions for uh, distributed systems. And so what really motivates this research is the uh, awareness that when we use uh, spectra for the characterization of ground motions and to eventually also provide um, an evaluation of the uh, structural risk, we know that we uh, miss information on key uh, uh, ground motion features, which are just important in general, but can be really critical for the analysis of distributed systems. And these features include the multidirectionality of motions, the uh, duration, the path like component, and the large uh, set specific variability, which really uh, translates into the uh, potential of having a structure impacted by just motions with different amplitudes and different uh, frequency content at different locations and at different uh, just instances of time. Now, uh, just with this idea in mind, our just final goal is really to provide a comparison between the uh, just risk post structures uh, obtained from classical approaches based to uh, perform to um, uh, probabilistic seismic hazard uh, analysis and approaches purely based on the use of um, numerical simulations or on, uh, simulated ground motions. Now. Um, so here's an overview of the, uh, just of the project. And so today I'm going to uh, just uh, talk about how we have finalized the construction of a database of uh, validated simulated records for the San Francisco Bay Area. And I will also spend like a few words about how we are addressing, and we have actually completed the uh, just modeling of the uh, uh, West San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge in the open seas environment. And I will also share some uh, very preliminary results uh, of a just nonlinear runs uh, performed with the a full set, a full suite of uh, simulated ground uh, motions. Now, uh, so uh, so when we talk about the validation of the uh, ground motion simulation, so in the context of this project, we have just performed, conducted this validation within the framework of a four-step methodology we have recently developed along with uh, acceptance criteria, which are based on the hypothesis uh, testing. So this uh, methodology counts for just uh, uh, separate steps. And and um, step one, which uh, corresponds to the selection of a population of real records consistent with the simulated scenarios. And then step two through four, where we move towards what we call more application-oriented type of analysis. So in step two, we compare the distribution of intensity measures for uh, simulated records real records and ground motion models when applicable. In step three, we compare the distribution of simple proxies for infrastructure response. And then in step four, we uh, compare the distribution of uh, engineering demand parameters for a realistic model of a structure. So um, today I'm going to focus on this in the first three steps only. So now the uh, so target region uh, for this project is the San Francisco Bay Area. And here's a representation of the computational domain, which covers uh, just an area of 30 by 80 uh, kilometers. Uh, the model has, has been developed in SW4 and has a frequency resolution of 5 hertz and um, a, a, as a minimum shear velocity of 500 meters per second and uh, utilizes the USGS 3D model with topography for the representation of the geology structure. So here in this uh, just figure, so the triangles represent the uh, stations, the sites at which the um, Three components of the ground motions have been extracted, and uh, here the uh, squares represent the uh, just location of the uh, of the uh, of the piers uh, of the bridge. Whereas this uh, red line here, just running across the domain, uh, just represents the Hayward fault, which is for this study is the uh, causative uh, just fault. Now the uh, database of uh, just record here. Uh, the simulated records uh, has been obtained from uh, eight realizations of the uh, magnitude seven here were fault uh, event. So the initial idea here was to uh, 
um, start having just a first sense of, of the uh, expected aleatory variability of, uh, just uh, uh, associated with um, a magnitude 7 and here at fault event. So all these eight realizations differ from each other only for the characteristics of the fault rupture. And here on the right hand side, you see representation of the distribution for each of these scenarios. So what we do, we change the uh, just distribution of the asperities. So we go from an, um, just a pure stochastic model to a an hybrid model that just combines just a stochastic distribution of the slip in the background and then um, just a concentrate as a concentration of the uh, uh, slip in these uh, just patches. And then we consider two different locations of the epicenter. So as a result, we have four just realizations where we have the epicenter located on the northern side of the hero fault and four realizations where we have the epicenter located on the southern side of the hero uh, fault. So at the end, this led to a database of records of just uh, four, about 4,400 uh, just records in the uh, component uh, just parallel to the fault and 4,400 uh, just records um, of the component uh, just normal to the uh, to the fault rupture. Now, um, so let's start from uh, step number uh, one. So the uh, just selection of uh, just a population of real records consistent with the uh, uh, um, domain we're modeling and with the event we are simulating. So, um, so what we have done with this project, we have developed a methodology uh, to uh, select the real records that can provide really like a way, an objective way to just uh, 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 select the uh, real records consistent with the uh, just simulated event. And so this methodology is based on the use of a gram motion model that uh, represent in the average the uh, uh, um, seismic, the um, uh, spectral acceleration for the average condition of the San Francisco Bay Area. And this plot, this is represented by this black line here. And then we also define just uh, acceptance boundaries, which are represented by these dotted lines, which uh, uh, are obtained uh, uh, by deviating uh, we have a deviation of 30% from the uh, just median of the prediction and um, with inclusion of the uh, total epistemic uncertainties driving from the just uh, model to model variability in the prediction of the uh, spectral acceleration. So then what we do, we just perturb the parameters one at a time and then we just define just an uh, upper limit. So the, upper, the maximum value, minimum value of these parameters depending on whether we are still within the acceptance boundaries with the predicted uh, spectral acceleration. And so in the context of this study, we have uh, considered four parameters. So the uh, moment magnitude, the faulting mechanism, the uh, depth of the basin, and the um, shallow shear wave uh, velocity. So at the end of this process for the San Francisco Bay Area, for the, the, the domain that I have uh, just shown, so we have obtained um, a database of 20 records for seven uh, different, from seven different events. Now, so the way we use, how do we use this, um, this database? So we just derive the uh, just mean uh, uh, spectral acceleration and the corresponding variability. And uh, just uh, for multiple spectral periods, we correct these values to account for the uneven sampling of the, uh, the motions. And then we use this value for a comparison against the uh, simulated records. Now, um, in step number two, uh, so uh, here I just I'm showing just really a snapshot for each of these steps, uh, and so I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, comparison of the uh, spectral acceleration as uh, derived from the uh, uh, eight scenarios. So from the simulated records, the real records, and the gram motion uh, uh, models. In these two plots, I'm showing this type of analysis performed on the two separate components, fault normal and fault uh, parallel. And on this plot, you also see the uh, acceptance criteria, which in this case were derived just mainly based on the uh, gram motion, the uh, gram motion uh, models. Now, um, of course, we focus we are focusing in the context of this work of this study on the uh, spectral uh, just bandwidth of interest for the nice of the Bay Ridge. So we go from approximately 0 0.9 seconds to 10 seconds to account for the uh, first three modes of vibration of the standalone tower and the uh, just full ridge as it will be shown in the next uh, slides. Now, um, so looking at this plot, well, uh, just although the uh, um, uh, simulations, as you can see, which are represented by the black and gray lines, lay within the acceptance criteria, you can clearly see that between two seconds and 10 seconds, they tend to just underestimate the uh, spectral acceleration. Now, we have just put some effort here in trying to interpret these results. And there are like two main points we should keep in mind when we look at these plots. So the first is that we are performing this comparison and also deriving this acceptance criteria based on these uh, ground motion models, which are not necessarily uh, just representative of the specific characteristic of the San Francisco Bay Area, which we know is characterized by very shallow basins with very low shear wave velocity. And second, so we have a cap here on the minimum shear wave velocity of 500 meters per second. And as you see listed in this bar plot here, really just with this cap on the minimum shear wave velocity, we are covering just about like 30, 35% of the stations uh, with just an accurate representation of what is the geology structure. So um, 
given this, so our current approach is to apply the, some frequency dependent amplification factors, and this is something we are currently doing to account for this cap on the shear velocity. But at the same time, we are also performing uh, two additional scenarios uh, uh, with uh, just a reduced uh, B, uh, a minimum shear, um, shear velocity uh, of 300 meters per second with a twofold objective. So we want to first verify if this is actually driving this behavior here, or if this is, if this is something we should expect for just region at the San Francisco Bay Area, for which we know we don't have just comparable historical uh, just events. And also we want to see uh, in the in just time domain if what we are obtaining from the simulated from the simulations is comparable to what we would obtain with the, by applying the uh, frequency dependent uh, amplification factors to this um, spectrum. Now, just quickly, just uh, step number three. Um, so we just look here at the multiple um, infrastructure response proxies. And the context of this presentation, we'll just talk about the interperiod correlation only. So here I'm showing just the variation of rho, just um, uh, of, of epsilon across multiple periods. And as you can see, we extended here just analysis to 15 seconds to account for potential elongations of the fundamental period of the bridge uh, in case of uh, just no linearities in the structure. And here, just the uh, conditioning period is 10 seconds, which is approximately the fundamental period of the uh, uh, of the, uh, the Bay Bridge, uh, just as has resulted by uh, from our um, numerical uh, just simulations of the of the full structure. Now, uh, so on the full parallel component, you can see that uh, so the uh, simulations in terms so like interpretive correlation perform uh, just well are within the acceptance criteria and are pretty close to what just the uh, 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 consistent population of uh, real records would yield. However, you notice here that the full, the full normal component, there is a tendency of the um, simulations to to show a stronger correlation, which is something we have actually observed across like multiple uh, conditioning periods. And um, so the way we interpret this um, uh, is by think, thinking that uh, in the uh, although the model, the medical model utilizes the um, US um, GS 3D uh, model, still doesn't possess that granularity in the description of the geology structure. And so this is what may be driving this stronger correlation, which really just uh, 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 is reflecting in uh, just uh, less uh, just variability in the just, um, peaks and troughs in the uh, in the spectrum. And just to, so here's, for example, is the same type of analysis extended to uh, uh, just um, a different conditioning period, which is 3.50 seconds corresponding to the fundamental period of vibration of the uh, one of the uh, well, the uh, two uh, topologies of the towers we have in the beverage. And again, you see a consistent tendency, especially for in the fourth normal component to uh, just overestimate the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the correlation, uh, particularly just when we look at correlation with uh, just shorter, uh, shorter periods. And now, uh, just I want to spend like a few words. So here, just before I just move to the bridge, I just want to just uh, point out that. So at the end of this validation process, really what we want to do, we want to provide indication on how we can reliably use these motions, which really just will translate into uh, just a use of this motion, which will be dependent on the application. So dependent on the just bandwidth of interest of spectral peers. And so just can, that can be, this can be used, uh, used uh, reliably for just specific bandwidths and may need some uh, just uh, uh, modifications or many, to be used with uh, just carefully for other just spectral bandwidths. Now, so the structure we are going to use for uh, uh, our analysis as uh, so just a representative structure of distributed system. So the Bay Bridge, and um, I want to just show you how we are just uh, handling the uh, modeling the open seas environment. So first, I want to say that we had to just conduct an extensive literature review to really obtain a detailed and reliable uh, just information on uh, materials and on uh, just connections. And at the end of this process, so we have completed a model, um, a 3D reduce order uh, fiber section model in open seas, which includes multiple type of elements. So beam column elements, rotational trusses to model the suspenders and the cables and shell elements for a total of uh, 20, about 23,000 degrees of freedom. Uh, as for the loading condition, before running our dynamic analysis, we just like to uh, gravity initialize the model. So we've imposed a camber and the corresponding, of course, pre-stressing force uh, to, the, uh, to the cables, which again, has been the results of uh, just a lot of like research uh, just in literature and uh, um, uh, conversation with people who have just experienced and worked with the uh, just a um, beverage in the uh, in the past and here just to give you a sense of how we are really just addressing the model of this complex structure uh, but still just in a way that is just uh, can be just handled easily handled in open seas for example we know we have gaps between just decks and uh, just supports so towers and piers and so for you for for modeling these gaps, we are using the impact material in open seas. And for, uh, for example, for uh, just determining the value of K1, which will be the uh, just uh, stiffness uh, just at the impact of the just stack against the tower or against the, uh, the, the concrete pier. So we are performing separate pushover analysis. So really just to try to uh, obtain an, an accurate estimate of what would be the actual behavior of this uh, of the bridge under just a three uh, just dimensional type of excitation, multi-support excitation. And, um, 
And so finally, uh, so here I want to just show some uh, just very preliminary results coming from a linear run of the Bay Bridge. So yeah, here we're looking at the. Oh, thank you. Um, so uh, subject to, uh, uh, again, three components of the ground motions uh, at multiple uh, just support. So we have a multi-support type of excitation. And uh, here just we have started like looking at the, for example, differential displacement between the uh, just node number one, which would be representative of the in-plane displacement of the tower, and node number two, which would be just at the mid-span of, uh, of the deck, where we see, of course, as expected, an amplification about 10, of, uh, 10 times. And what is being really instructive, uh, just uh, when we look at this, uh, just linear runs, is uh, really just the idea of uh, just having a sense of where we should just pay our attention when we look at them and the results from the nonlinear runs. If, for example, this would be just at the impact, as I mentioned, uh, so the uh, just gap between the uh, tower and the and the deck, or if it will be at the connection, because especially just in terms of like higher frequencies, at the, um, the connection between the cables and the tower. So we are just starting like looking at the first results and just uh, planning on moving uh, just um, uh, uh, towards uh, the execution of the uh, nonlinear runs. So in conclusion here, so uh, moving forward, the last steps for the completion of the project uh, will be the inclusion of uh, runs with a lower minimum share uh, velocity for the reason that we have uh, just um, uh, explained like earlier, just really have just um, a complete uh, uh, um, uh, view and uh, just a, a full set of data just for just an objective judgment uh, and evaluation of the uh, simulated motions. Then we are just are going to execute the full set of nonlinear runs of the uh, West San Francisco Oakland Bay Bridge in open seas, which will include also the uh, just modeling of the uh, um, uh, material properties, uh, just not with a distribution of the uh, of uh, um, the um, uh, just material characteristics. And so this will be done in the E uh, with, with some, just the tools in, um, uh, in the same standard. So E, U, 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 Q, and the uh, QO, uh, FEM. And then finally, we will just provide a comparison of the uh, structural demand as obtained from uh, um, a PSH based approach and from a site specific simulation based uh, just approach. And with this, I conclude my just presentation. I'll be happy to take your uh, questions at the uh, end of this session. Thank you.